even for us as coaches, like we have learned and revised and reformed our model based on what we've learned from teaching and from going through the curriculum. You know, it's, it's like the, you know, uh, when you have a kid and they ask you a question and they're just asking the question because they want to know and you start talking and you think to yourself, wait, that's not a good enough answer. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. This is Matt Reynolds. You know me, I'm pretty much always here. And I am joined today by a good friend, coach at Barbell Logic, and really the curriculum director at the Academy, CJ Gocher, coming to you from beautiful, sunny San Diego area. That's really like you have to you have to pay a lot of money for stuff down there, basically because it's seventy four and sunny, pretty much. The sunshine tax is terrible. Every, that's right, every single day. So thanks for being on the show, man. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, we have you've been on the show once before, I think once. Is that right? Yeah, once before it was uh, discussing the, the science days. Space. Yeah, we talked about the uh, the problem of scientism, right? And you're you're a big you're a big science guy. We like science. We like studies. We just don't put our entire uh, faith and religion in behind uh, double blind placebo based university studies. You've you've talked about the problem with that. Like while those things are definitely a tool, um, so you can go back and check that out. Uh, Scott would be good at talking about what exact episode that is Trent might bump in here and be like that is episode 74 but I don't know what episode (laughs) is so thanks for being on the show um you have um you know as Barbell Logic has grown as a company we have watched the cream kind of rise to the top and everybody sort of started everybody other than me started as as a coach as a as a really a general contractor coach and um you've really found a niche you continue to coach for us and do it well but you found this niche in in the academy and in really taking the original curriculum that we had and and making additions to it and changes to it and really making it ours. And uh, it seems like you've just really flourished in that role. Is that fair to say? It's been like... The, the academy thing has been a blast from the beginning, even just being a teacher, uh, you know, on, on as the curriculum originally was to now doing the, the curriculum manager position, like... <laughs> I'm 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 loving it. There's a there's there's an element to it, uh, which which is coaching. You know, there's an element to it which is taking information, simplifying it down, getting feedback whether the information was received. Like it's it's sort of a long long form version of cueing a rep, watching someone go over six months from from kind of like not grasping the ideas to developing as a coach. It's 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 been really cool. Yeah, that's a great analogy that you have there. Like we're we're coaches. That's what we do, right? We teach and we coach, and so um, we have expanded our services from just coaching clients to coaching coaches, and it gives you an opportunity to really be able to to color and and bring to life what the education for future really master strength coaches are are able to um, learn to be able to to uh, digest. And to the, the curriculum is, I, I, I said even before the show, you and I were talking off the air that I don't want this to be a big commercial for the academy, but holy shit, the, the, the academy curriculum is unbelievable. I had um, all the most listeners will know Jonathan Sullivan. I had Sully uh, look through all the curriculum in the last couple of weeks and just be like, I, I just want some feedback on this. And he's like, dude, this is the, this is the best. This is the best coaching of coaches. I've ever seen. And he was just very impressed with it. And so that, that was great. Cause Sully was this kind of like third party, you know, could, and, and, and sort of like the wise old instructor that we all kind of look up to Dr. Sullivan. And he was, he was super impressed. And so uh, tell me a little bit about like, how is the curriculum evolving from the original? And I think the original curriculum was great, but as we have moved on over the last year, how has that really evolved and, and why, what was the need for it to evolve to what it is now? Well, First things first, we had hundreds of data points of feedback from the of feedback from the students, feedback from the the coaches who were teaching it, um, where we were getting feedback as to was this information being received, what was most useful, and it, we kind of reached this critical mass. Like we have to do something. We have we have a core like a kernel of content here uh, that, and we have what we need to to make it. 
um, better for the audience that we're trying to reach. So like we kind of, it, it almost felt like inevitable, you know, we had to, we had to move this forward. Um, like the feedback piece was a huge thing in terms of what, uh, what are they getting? What are they not? Some pieces being the hardest, some pieces uh, being uh, a kind of well-liked, but perhaps not as useful or not as practical to the coach mm -hmm. and that being their feedback to us. And so trying to level load that and strip out as much of, of the piece that they felt wasn't as, as practical to them after they had left so that we could put in more and more and more of the things they got the, the ROI out of the, the bang for the buck. There was the focus. Uh, we wanted, we, uh, the, some of the feedback we got was this, it was like, it was a presentation of information, you know, and, and the individual instructor, cause we do weekly webinars, um, for those who aren't familiar with how the whole thing works, uh, there's every week, you know, so the assignment is released, there's uh, readings, there's videos, there's assignments to feedback and in Slack. Uh, and every week, the students have an opportunity to post a video of them coaching, to post a video of them lifting, uh, provided that they provide their own self-assessment to get feedback from their peer coaches and then from the staff coach. Yeah, so there are, every student is in a class with somewhere between six and 10, occasionally 12 other students and a, and a master coach, a, a professor master coach who's leading the class. And there is a, there is a, there's a group webinar call that's a couple hours once a week. We set that class up based on like when that call is going to be. So, you know, the, this class is going to have calls on Tuesday nights at 7 PM. This one's Saturday mornings, this one's Sunday evenings, whatever. So you can find one that fits your schedule. And you then, so you, you go through the curriculum, you go through the assignments, you go through the work, and then you get some time to actually spend in a group chat to talk with each other and learn from each other, your group of peers, but also then learn from the master coach. The master coach can give you feedback on on what they're seeing out of the class. It, it, that's probably a fair uh, judgment. So yeah, so then, so really what I'm hearing you say is the, the big difference is that original curriculum for us was written before we launched the academy at all. There, there weren't any students to give feedback. And now that we've done it since October of 18, we've had we've had a couple hundred students come through and we've we've been able to have tremendous feedback on what's working well, uh, what maybe the content was good, but for some reason it wasn't laying. I keep thinking about the the old parable of the sower, right? Of like throwing the seed. And it seems like what you're what you've done with the updates in curriculum is to try to make sure that the seed falls on fertile ground better. How do we make sure that the seed hits fertile ground and doesn't hit you know, dry ground or concrete or whatever and never springs. And so how do we make this land better and take root and so that the, the students don't just don't just hear it or read it and do the thing that we all did in high school, which is learn it for the test and then forget the thing. But how does it take root and actually grow and, and implant in who they are? We're taking we're taking as a principle for the coaching academy. There's a John Hattie, uh, Dr. John Hattie, uh, started this idea of visible learning. That learning happens when the student has a perspective from oh, from uh, from the coach or from the teacher's perspective, and the teacher sees things as visible from the student perspective. We we wanted to be able to see things from their perspective and realize where they were getting it, where they weren't. Um, what they what they loved was the coaching interaction and the weekly webinars and you know that piece of the content, uh, and then it was catching up to to kind of the weekly actual curriculum piece so taking that the the core pres presented content and making that interactive making that uh inhabitable making that uh bringing in some of that science of learning to to uh, to bring it to life yeah that's great that's great i've noticed that we are having students that are now going through the curriculum for the second time having already taken it the first time either they're auditing the class or retaking the class what what has been your feedback? What's been their feedback that you're seeing? Um, that what are they saying is different from the first time through? Maybe they took it in the fall and spring of of eighteen and nineteen, and now here we are a year later, the fall and spring of nineteen and twenty. What what's their feedback so far that you're hearing from those students who have taken it twice? So. Oh, we've been blessed to have, you know, students who were, they were excited about it. They liked it the first time. They were excited about it the second time uh, to, to come back. And then, you know, getting that feedback from them as well. Uh, probably the, the biggest, it's, it's been positive, but, you know, when you get positive feedback, it's always like, well, you know, if it's new content, they're getting new things. Of course, it's positive. Um, but kind of the biggest thing has been how it's, how it's been tailored to the decision making and the whole coach process. So uh, the idea that, you know, just, just as an example, taking uh, teaching progressions, like looking at, okay, these are a, a previously, this is a tool that you can take out there and use with your clients, which is great. 
And now there's like a whole lesson on how we use the teaching progressions, how we adapt them to the clients, depending on who we're working with, best practices and, and, and uh, that, that, those changes have been a yeah. lot of what we got our most positive feedback about. Yeah, it's, uh, one of the things I noticed, it, it seems like there is a, a greater emphasis on the psychology of coaching and being able to connect with your clients. So um, what maybe was a little bit rigid in the beginning, like this is kind of the orthodox way of doing it, this is what we do, has now sort of, it's not a, it's not a do whatever you want sort of thing. There's still very much a, a standard to follow and there is still an orthodox way to do this, but to understand like, hey, you're not going to teach the squat the same way to a 65 year old female as you are to a to a 19 year old guy who's getting ready to go to college to go play football. Like the teaching progression, while the the squat itself or the deadlift itself might look very similar or even the same, the way you speak, the way you connect, the way you emphasize things changes. Right, that 19 year old kid, he's out there to burn the world down. He doesn't, for the most part, right. And it depends on the person. Um, that 65 year old lady who's never lifted before, she's she's scared. And one of the things you have to do is calm her down and make, make sure she understands that everything's going to be okay. She's going to be just fine. You might teach her the progression out of a kitchen chair. You might, you know, there are things that, so there, so to say like, this is the way we do things sort of creates that rigidness to go like, well, hold on. There needs to be enough flexibility to understand who your client is. Everything, everything in the new, so we, we start now with the, the, the block on coaching and, and part of the, the overarching theme of that is your values, identity, and priority, your VIP and your clients VIP. What are their values, identity, and priorities? Like, what do they care about? And in the entire course, it's almost like, you know, a magnet that follows along and just everything kind of aligns with that as it passes, uh, all of our content and all of the, the, the point becomes, okay, but is this what your client needs in the online space, in the in-person space, with the client base that you're working with, with your skill set? Uh, we've had PTs come through this course. We've had, you know, uh, prior coaches. We've had people who have no coaching background, but they're teachers. Okay, you bring that to coaching and coach with that. And that has, has opened things up for us as teachers, uh, but that's probably what uh, that change in, in attitude has been something we've gotten a lot of positive feedback about. Yeah, that's really good. Um, so, so a question I'm sure a lot of people are, are thinking right now that are listening to this is like, who is the academy for? Do I need to be a coach? Do I need to have a year of coaching under my belt to do the academy? Like, can I benefit from this thing? Uh, going into it relatively green. Yeah, it's, it's the person who's going into a relatively green that we kind of want. Um, so we're, we're narrowing this down, like the VIP of the student who we, who we think will do best coming in. And attitudinally, we joke that it's the barbell nerd, but it's the person who's, who's passionate about the content, passionate about the experience. Uh, and usually someone who's been coaching for probably less than five years. Uh, is usually because after after that point, you know, probably other content like the master's classes or things. We want somebody who is either looking for their 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 coaching future. Like, is this something I want to do? I'm passionate about it. I love it. I'm I'm taking the shallow water. I'm teaching my family, my friends, my gym mates. You know, but I'm just like, but is this something I can do professionally? Mm. Uh, then yeah, like that's kind of who the class is for. And then the, maybe somebody who's not as familiar with barbell strength coaching, but has been coaching other things or has only been barbell coaching for a year or two. Like that's where we generally find people get the most like, Oh, you know, the aha moments that mm. really, really move them forward. Yeah, that's, that's really good. You know, I, I've thought a lot about this, that, that in the beginning for us at Barbell Logic, as we, as we launched the business, People that joined um, both the the online coaching service and the academy service kind of knew what we were about. They had been pre-educated, right? They had read the books, they had watched our videos, they had listened to the podcast, things like that. And more and more people are coming in that are. And part of this is just because uh, you know our, our we've done a good job of of marketing and the SEO, and people find us from Google and. And we've created this thing where we that I think has been very successful to not just train clients, and certainly that's still the the primary service, the pipeline that pays the bills, but also a way to train coaches. You're getting these people that come in who don't have the same background that the rest of us have, and sort of this hardcore barbell, let's low bar squat, let's deadlift, let's bench press and press, and they come from that. They come from kettlebell backgrounds, they come from CrossFit backgrounds, they come from yoga backgrounds, or they come from PT backgrounds or athletic trainers that are coming in, and so. There is, I think, a tremendous amount of value add for those people to go like, man, there is, and I think there's a there's an insane value add still for the people who have come out of that. Listen, I know why we low bar squat. I know why we 
conventional deadlift. I know why we do these things. I understand the basics of MED programming. I still, man, I've looked at the, I've looked at the academy content. It's so good. And I've taken the test. Like, I, you know, I've taken the, the professional barbell coach written test. It's so good. It's so in-depth. And it's so, like, it's hard, but it's fun. And it's challenging. And it exposes your weakness. I remember when I took it, you know, and it, uh, the anatomy is difficult on the on that test. The mechanics are difficult. I got in there and, you know, I did pretty good on the anatomy. And remember, I've taught anatomy one and two in college, although it's been, it's been a while. Um, I did pretty well in the academy. I got the mechanics and I kind of get my ass kicked a little bit. And I was like, whoa, I got to bone up on this stuff. And some people, I think, go into that. And it, it's scary for me. I think one of the things that's great about the the academy is that it exposes some of those weaknesses, but it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't belittle you for them. It's like, OK, now we've got ways to bring that thing up. And you can start to find the holes in your own coaching. I think for most of us, it's not like we didn't learn coaching the way we learned math, right? I learned math by you learn the basics of mathematics, and then you get into that pre-algebra and junior high, and then algebra, and then geometry, and then trigonometry, and then calculus. And, and you know, and you've got this sort of step-by-step progression to make sure that there are no holes in your knowledge about math. Math always builds on itself. I think really up until the academy was launched, there's nothing that had ever been put forth but forward that was like that for coaching. And so for those of us who have coached for a long time, I've coached for 20 years, I didn't take any sort of academy. There are, I have broad and deep knowledge of most subjects. And then there's a couple of things that the academy will expose in me that I'm like, woof, I don't know that well enough. And I need to be better. And it's not about feeling bad about myself or, or making fun. It's about like, hey, this is great to expose. I want to know where I'm weak. And I want to step up the game. Yeah, the I virtually everyone who comes through finds that like there there is a point to it where they thought, oh, I thought this is a strong point for me. And then actually, like, oh, uh, one of the things that comes up is actually online coaching and video reviews. Mm. You know, got providing that feedback for people, people who have been, you know, we want real-time coaches, we want that skill. That's a core coaching skill set. And then finding like their data dumping as soon as they start, you know, talking about a video online, they, they like, that's a completely different skill set. Yes. Or whether it's the biomechanics thing, they're like, yeah, I get the whole biomechanics thing. I understand the low bar, high bar thing. But when we actually break it down, it's like, uh, there, there's kind of that mind blown moment. Yeah. And even, yeah, even, even for us as coaches, like we have learned and revised and reformed our model based on what we've learned from teaching and from going through the curriculum. And when, when students, you know, it's, it's like the, you know, uh, when you have a kid and they ask you a question and they're just asking the question because they want to know. And you start talking and you think to yourself, wait, that's not a good enough answer. And that's so right. now the curriculum team has to go back and reform the curriculum and remake that. Yeah, it's, uh, we've joked about this before. Like this, our... What we've done in coaching has sort of, if we weren't already, has turned us all into like giant skeptics, right? Like you better have the reason why behind the how. Because we, we get really good at the how, especially in the Western world, in the U.S. especially. We're great at the hows, but we're kind of shitty at the why. And I think one of the things that the Academy has had to do is like we, there are things that we, are, we know are true because our experience tells us that they are, but to just say that we know that they're true from experience and not be able to say, well, here's why I know like that's been really good to expose that and to come up like, boy, there has to be a reason behind everything we do. We can't just say this is what works or this is, it's gotta be like, well, this is why it works. We've had some, some really experienced coaches come through. And like I said, some physical therapists and one of the, one of the things they tell me is like one of the biggest values that they got out of it was the ability to confidently tell themselves so when they say something to a client, when they're saying something, they're not just regurgitating what they learned somewhere else. That's right. They, they've processed it through. Other people have challenged them on it and they've had to talk it through. And it's, so when they're presenting it to a client, like they, they, they can have the confidence to say it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great example too. And it actually basically takes the math example I just gave and it takes it even deeper and further into, into more like Newtonian math or Newtonian physics. It's not it's not remembering or being able to understand even or even regurgitating the why, but to really understand the why. So you understand if this, then this in the way we coach, I think that's really the way the academy attacks things. So you take the, we know these things to be true, but here's why they're true. And then we really, we really flesh that out in the class so that the students understand I'm not just regurgitating, not just the definition of what is true and not just the definition of why it's true, but I've really internalized why it's true so that now I can then, and I think what that's done for us is when you get then scores or even hundreds of people who really understand the whys, 
it continues to modify the curriculum because now you've got a ton of great minds thinking about, hold on, like I hear what you're saying in this in this issue or in week nine, but I've noticed this and I think this is the why and it's made us go, you know what? We better think about this. And even even things that we've found true. Is it true in all contexts? Right. So sure. every every Rarely. time we every every time somebody sends out, you know, like they finish the coaching academy and they go out and do their thing, they remain as part of our part of our coaching academy Slack. Like I stay in touch with a lot of my former group, you know, uh, a lot of my former students, and they come back with how they have taken the coaching academy information, interacted with the world, and what the what the impact has been with their clients or where it hasn't been. And of course, sometimes we're all, you know, we're all coaches, we're all making mistakes. Sometimes it's just like, uh, you know, okay, remember this thing we talked about. But oftentimes it's like, let's adapt that to yep. what's important to you. And yep. that's that's where this has been moving. That's great. Uh, let's, I want to talk a little bit about what value you get out of this thing. But before we do, I want to, I want to do a kind of a final, like, what's the value prop here? for the students that are in the academy. So the, the practical takeaways um, that we can offer, and, and certainly I'll, you know, as the owner of Barbell Logic, I'll tell you that it, it exponentially increases your chance to work at Barbell Logic. In the, and by the way, like it's not one of those deals where um, we are in a position right now where everyone who coaches in a gym is out of a job because there are no gyms open. And so there is a, a tremendous benefit to being able to coach online, um, whether, at Bar whether it's at Barbell Logic or not, but certainly at Barbell Logic, we have the opportunity and we've got a great team that we've been able to create the, the, the means for our coaches to just coach. It's a turnkey. If you're an expert coach and you've graduated from the academy, and especially then if you go on and you, you earn your, your professional barbell coaching certification, then you have created an opportunity for yourself to work here at which the pay's pretty damn good per hour and extremely flexible and you can do it from anywhere you want in the world. And oh, by the way, it continues to run in the middle of pandemics. Like we keep coaching our clients when all of the other gyms are closed down. So that is a very practical job related piece. What do you see as some of those practical takeaways, even for the people who won't eventually work at Barbell Logic, what are those takeaways for people as a value prop for going through the academy? So regardless of who you are, regardless of where you're coming from, our goal is to save you time and frustration. You know, we're like, well, I talk about in an article about the flail zone and how so often our, even our coaching practice is unproductive because we don't have the frame of knowledge and we don't have the feedback circle to get what we need out of that coaching practice to advance our coaching knowledge and our skill. We provide that. So within an online environment that you can use, we have that coaching circle, we have that feedback loop. In 26 weeks, we cover the base of knowledge so you're not gonna flail. You don't go in and like you get through a session and you're just glad you survived. Like you, you have the knowledge tools and also the learning tools to, to go, okay, here's what I learned from that session. I can apply to your next, I can apply to your next. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I, I, I love that you guys have been able to uh, get to that get to that point. Let, let's turn the tables a little bit from the students to the role that you've taken here at the Academy. Uh, you know, you've been a coach for a long time. You've, you are, you're an OG. You came on, uh, as we launched the thing. So you back, yeah, back in December of 16. Um, you know, why do you coach the Academy and what are you getting out of this coaching Academy? By the way, like you, you're a hell of a coach. I coach you as a lifter. We haven't even talked about this, but you're a pretty damn good lifter for being a little guy. Uh, you're getting your first your first sniff at uh, block training, which you've done quite well, and you've done it in your own garage, and you've done it with a new baby at home in the middle of a pandemic, and so you're <laughs> doing pretty good, knocking out that ninety one to ninety four percent sort of singles this week. Uh, you're doing you're doing pretty you're you're rocking there. But what what has been the benefits that you've seen for you in teaching the academy, both in your own knowledge and then in your own, you know, what value has it been able to bring to you to be able to reach out and and teach the students this way? So you brought it up earlier, the the whole, um, you know, kind of how it challenges us, like how we're all skeptics now, you know, in, in that kind of aspect. Uh, and the Coaching Academy has done a lot of that for me. If there is like probably the single most impactful lesson I've gotten uh, just in general in the last few years has been not getting excited about an idea, getting excited about testing an idea hmm. and getting excited about finding out that the idea was work, you know, that it's, that it, that it works. Um, and the coaching academy has been a lot of that. 
uh, so much of it. Like even just yesterday, I just had a conference call yesterday with, uh, with one of the groups that I'm with and we we're talking about training complexity and how, you know, one of the things, okay, the advanced lifter, their training complexity increases, blah, blah, blah. And one of the things that he brought up is like, well, in some ways your training complexity decreases, like your life complexity has to focus. Your priorities have to dial in. Like mm-hmm. your your training becomes the focus of your life if you're going to the Olympic Games. And there are some aspects which are more and some aspects which are less complex. And it's it's not like being a coaching academy teacher, it's not like, you know, I'm I've completely thrown away everything I've ever known, you know, because because of all that. Uh, it's but it constantly refines how I communicate, how I think about these ideas and how I apply them in my own coaching and training. Like uh, there, there's no doubt about that. It's like, it's not as simple as things get more complex. What does that mean? And what does that mean? So I, you know, when I have a lifter, you know, I start getting a lifter who's moving into advanced stages and the handrail of weekly increases goes away. Yeah. So how do we change those expectations? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, you know, I, I think you I, you kind of um, scratched the surface there of one of the things that you and I have talked about in the past of this idea of, I think sometimes maybe people get the idea that we are anti-science at Barbell Logic and we are not at all. It's interesting that you said what you get excited about is not a new idea, but it's testing the new idea. And what, what I've found is that there are people out there that would say when a new idea comes around, they would say, well, hold on, the published studies say that that new idea is not going to work, right? And to me, that is scientism. That is that is putting blind faith in the science itself in the published studies. And what we do is is we say, now hold on, there aren't any studies about this thing right now. Or there aren't any good studies, and we get an opportunity now. One of the things I love about Barbell Logic is that we have a big enough talent pool now, both with coaches and clients, to actually do the studies. You know, we we have a we have a a, a, a guy that's on staff, Greg. He's phenomenal. He's a He's a statistician. We call him the, he's an operational excellence analyst. And the guy can derive anything from our programming, from the, he can get into True Coach and he can say, okay, I can see the, the average increase of squats in this demographic over the first 12 weeks or the first 36 workouts. I can look at the compliance rating by the coach, by their, they can look at the average of their clients. Like, you know, all of those sort of things he's able to do. And so we're able at this point, because we have the staff and because we have the talent pool and both the clients and the coaches to actually run some of those studies. And they're, you know, maybe they don't, maybe you don't publish them. Maybe they're not, you know, double blind placebo university based studies, but they're pretty damn good. And we got a big talent pool to use. And so it is exciting to be able to test this. Like, you know what? We can actually test. Do these programming philosophies work? Let's test it. That's pretty exciting. It's that spirit of science-based coaching is that we we have to test everything yeah. that we do. And in some ways, a published study may not actually be tested if it's never been replicated, if it's never actually, you know, if it hasn't been applied outside of a laboratory setting. Yeah. And th- this is our opportunity to do that. Yeah, that's great. What have you, what, what are, what's your biggest takeaway, not just as an academy teacher, but as a, as a block coach, you, you've done in-person coaching for years and years, and now you've done online coaching for, um, for three and a half years, somewhere in that ballpark, pushing four years. What are the takeaways that you've learned? How does that change your coaching? You talked about earlier, it's very different to coach somebody in real time, in person, and that's, that's a skill set that all great coaches should have. You should be able to coach people in person, real time. But the skill set to communicate after the fact back to your clients via typed word or verbal written word, screen recording, whatever, how has that changed your coaching? So probably the, probably the biggest thing it's taught me, the online, actually just straight up online feedback has taught me uh, a little bit of humility about my ability as a real-time coach. Oftentimes they correct themselves, you know, over the course of a set, over the course of several days and narrowing down to find out where is the value add like in real time, I'm, I, I'm a cheerful guy. I kind of have a, a bit of a personality to me. So like, I can bring that to the CrossFit gym. I can bring that to the, to the space and, and feel like, like I'm bringing something, like I'm bringing my energy. In, yeah. online, in online coaching, you know, once the first six months is done and the technique is pretty dialed in, what do I have now? Like it's the programming skill and it's the, okay, you know, okay, their program is dialed in and everything's moved in. Where do we add value now? 
Like, how do we make this person's life better? How do we, like, what's the goal setting focus? What's the lifestyle change? Like that we can, we can continue to help this person move uh, and, and in the way that they want to go. Yeah. And like, that's probably been the biggest piece, how to bring value without boom, you know, the blast of, of personal energy. That, yeah. That's, that's actually a great point. Like it's, it's just, there's, it's easy to hide behind the veil of personal energy, you know, and you see this with personal trainers who have no idea what they're doing, right? We've made for years, we've sort of like made fun of that. The, the guys with the purple polos on at the, you know, what gym that fitness gym that, are just rep counters. And some of them are really good cheerleaders, right? They, they don't have any idea how to coach. They don't know anything about anatomy or, or physics or mechanics or like what lifts to do, but they're, they're probably likable people. They've got great personalities. They probably make a real good coach if they spend some time learning the thing. But ultimately like their entire game is I can motivate in the moment. Online coaching, there's no ability to motivate in the moment. None, because you're not there. They're there by themselves. And many of our co clients, most of our clients, are training by themselves in their garage, in their basement, right? What well, you do, like I'm coaching you and you're out there in your garage and you're, you know, and it's and it's hot or in the wintertime it's cold, not there in San Diego because it's never cold. But people are going through that and you go, okay, like I can't I can't hide behind that anymore. I can't be a cheerleader. There isn't any of that in online coaching. It's it's very real. It's very like, okay, I can I can give very clear cues to fix the lifts, to fix the technique, to fix the movement. And then I can give very good programming feedback and programming changes, but eventually you become almost, it's about the accountability and the life coaching. And again, it comes back to that idea of like value, identity, what's the P? Priorities. Priorities, value, identity, priorities. It comes back to that, like identifying that and then being able to, being able to empathize with that with your clients and being able to help them push deeper into helping them understand here, these are their values. These are, this is their identity. These are their priorities. And how do we continue to flesh that out in a way that's most healthy for them. It's been really cool to see. And, you know, I, I honestly, I equate it. Uh, I've talked about this a couple times years ago, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I played a ton of online poker. Did you know that about me? No, I played I mean, I almost quit my job as a teacher to be a, become a professional <laughs> poker player. This is back when online poker was at least gray area legal in the United States. Like I'm sure all the servers were, they were in, you know, Aruba or something, but um, and then, and then the U S government came in and they shut it all down. And so you couldn't do it, but, um, playing online, when I played online poker, I could, I could 16 table, it's called, so I could play 16 tables at one time online. So that the number of hands you see and online poker goes way faster than in-person poker anyway. So at, at its worst, it's 16 times faster than regular poker. So you just see so many, well, then I could go to a casino and sit down at one table and could just rake. Right. Well, I actually think it's been the same thing for me in my coaching is that, when you're no longer able to hide behind the veil of being the cheerleader and the energy, and you've really got to focus on the coaching, you've really got to focus on the technique, you've really got to focus on the programming, then when they take you out of that online setting and put you back in real person, setting in, in, in coaching somebody in real time or doing a seminar, you're able to connect on such a better level because you now also get to use that sort of motivational factor, but that's not what it's all about. It's still really about the depth of the coaching skill. And uh, I think that's been really cool. I think people fear that they're going to lose their ability to coach if they shift in the online space. Like I'm seeing part of different coaching groups and things. I see so much, uh, so much of this conversation now that you know coronavirus is happening and sure. and so many people are getting pushed online from what they were doing before. And so many people are like, you know, oh, I'm going to forget what I had to do as a coach. Uh, I'm like, if I wasn't coaching online, you know, before block, like if if I hadn't been doing that, now that I've had the exposure to it, I would always want to keep that in my tool set. Yeah. There's like, there, there's a value. I'm going to pull these things out. I can't touch you anymore. Right. I can't, I can't come up with something between set to set. So I have to set session intentions. Right. I have to, I have to direct your focus and, and coach you to coach yourself. And that, that's something that is useful to an in-person coach. That's right. Like a skill set that it's I harder. didn't really have. It's harder to do. It's much harder to do. And like you said, we talked about those cues. We, we can't use visual cues. We can't use visual cues in real time, right? There are actually some things we can do. We take the screenshots and we can mark on the, you know, so we certainly, we, there are some visual, visual cues we use. Um, and we can't use tactile cues, or at least unless we say, hey, you need to use a tubo for your knee or something like, we indicate that they need to use a, but we're not able to do that. So everything that we do is have to, has to be done via either verbal communication or typed communication, which by the way, those two things are completely different, right? Like if I'm giving feedback on a screen recording and I'm speaking to someone in this podcast microphone, 
I don't say the same things I say if, I, if I'm going to type out the cues to them. That's different. And people have never thought about that stuff before. So it's, it's been really, really cool and very, very much a refining process, I think, certainly for me and I know for you as well, but I also think for all of our coaches. And so, um, let, dude, thank you for this. I want to, I want to, one of the things I want to wrap up with is what are, can you go back to some of those times or what are your favorite high points, either as an academy instructor or as a, as a coach at Block that you can be like, this, this is awesome. This is, this is going well. So, it was my first. Uh, uh, that that one's that one's pretty easy. It's a coaching academy has this on my mind. So, uh, one of my first coaching academy groups, at the time, he couldn't have been perfect. Like it was, it was just before the call was supposed to happen. The the knock on the door. You know, there's the there's the box waiting for me, and I pull out a t shirt. The the group had uh, group 25 and all pitched in to get a t-shirt. It was coaching Academy group 25 with the barbell <laughs> logic logo. And it, it said rule number one, don't be a bitch. <laughs> and it was, it was just a one-off shirt and it showed up right before the class. Right before the class, that's and amazing. I go, I go to the class. I mean, that's that's a story in of itself. But I go to the class, like I start it. I'm laughing. I, I have the shirt on, and as people log on to Zoom, like they're all wearing the they're shirts. Like, they oh, they all had it too. That's so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. See, I mean, that's the thing that everybody will always have, and then and then it'll lock the memory of that class of Academy Group 25, which in any other sense is just like this, can just get lost in all of the other Academy groups, and now you've got this tie to those guys back. And I, and I think it's really cool, like you said, that we maintain good relationships with those academy students moving forward. When they graduate from the academy, it's not like, hey, you know, sayonara, see ya. They remain part of the community, part of the Slack group, their professor, their whatever, what are we calling the professor coach, their mentor coach stays in contact with them. And then for a lot of, for a lot of those students, there end up being opportunity for them to continue to grow as students, either as an intern or, or associate coach at Block or to know that they're close to that and they have an opportunity to take a master's class or a couple master's classes, which are those deep dive classes and specific skills, skill sets like anatomy or programming or whatever. And, uh, and, and they end up having the opportunity potentially to work at block, but also to, I think one of the things that's awesome is like you said, they, they take the Academy and then they walk into the gym or they walk into it and they're surrounded by other coaches in the gym that they're at. And they know it's not an arrogance, but they know like I, I know so much more than anybody else in this room right now. So there's a confidence in their coaching because of of the skill set that they've been able to refine in the academy. I think that's been really, really cool. And and everybody understands that you do your job better when you're confident in your job. And I think this is the other piece. It it blows up the Dunning Kruger effect. It makes it it just because people you get these ideas, especially online, people come in and are like, I got this, I know how to coach, I'm an expert. And you get in there and you get your ass kicked and then you realize not an expert, right? But, but you come out of it and you, you know so much more than you knew going in. And you probably come out of it the first time in the academy being like, boy, there's a lot of stuff that I still don't know. And what it's really done, I think, too, for the academy professors is it's really made them the true master. They are the subject matter experts on these things of all things coaching. Like one of the things that we never even thought about was the refining process that would occur in our academy by the people to the people who actually teach the class. It's refined them, made them so much better of a coach. So uh, lots of wonderful value props there. You know, for us, um, just on the business side, it's interesting. We don't, we've never cared about the profit of the academy. I never care about making a dollar on the academy because of what it, we will indirectly make money on the academy because it, we, we understand that the bottleneck is, there's not enough expert coaches and we're making expert coaches and we're going to need more. And in the end, we need them. So I couldn't care less about making a dollar on the academy. It's we want to get as many people in there as we can because we need more people to become expert coaches because the more expert coaches we have, the more people we can reach. I mean, this really is the thing we believe in. It very much is much like our religion. It's it's our way of life. And we we believe this is the way to go about living life is training and training hard. And we have these values and I think it's been really good to be able to to create a system that makes more people who can help people do that. It's been pretty cool. It's been a blast. You Thank you for being on the show. Uh, if you're interested in the Academy, again, I realize that some of this has felt sort of like a big sales pitch for the Academy. That's not the goal. We just wanted to talk about what the amazing value prop was there is. You, you certainly can go. Uh, group 42 is filling up right now. So 41 groups done and full. Some of those are, are currently 
going. Group 42 starts May 26th, and those that group will meet on Tuesday nights at 5 p.m., so you're welcome to to uh, click on there. That will fill up fast. But Max is out at 10, uh, so there's just a few of those left, and then we will give other options for future classes. If that one doesn't fit your schedule, you can get in there and request a different time, and we will do our best to meet your needs. Dude, thanks for being on the show, CJ Gocher. Uh, new dad, great lifter, awesome coach and academy director at, uh, or curriculum director at the Barbell Logic Coaching Academy. Uh, you've done a great job with that curriculum. All of the new curriculum, if you sign up for the class at this point, all new classes are all new curriculum and have been for about three or four months now, that curriculum, that new, new version of the curriculum. And then even more stuff in store for the next step to try to figure out how to get this on a better online learning environment, more like an online classroom sort of setting. Um, so fun stuff coming up in the future, but, uh, man, you got to check out that new curriculum. If you're interested in refining your skills as a coach, even if you don't plan on being a full-time coach, if you're in the field, if you're a PT, if you're an athletic trainer, or if you're just really in to learning this stuff and you've read the books and read the articles and watched all the videos and listened to our podcast, and you're like, what's the next step? The next step is this, learn how to coach your, your, your family and your friends better. You're probably already doing it refine that. And what you might find is you'll fall in love with with some of this stuff. And some of you will end up moving and, and doing this as as a second career. Uh, and for many people, it'll it'll start as a part time thing. And you'll continue to work your full time job. And then what we found with a lot of our, our coaches is that eventually you'll leave that job at the bank or the post office and you'll you'll just coach because that's where your passion is. And because there are opportunities now to actually support your family that way, which is is really pretty cool. Thanks for being on the show. You guys are listening to uh, Barbell Logic Podcast. If you like the podcast, please give us a five-star review at iTunes or Stitcher or any of the places that you love listening to the Barbell Logic Podcast. Again, you can share an individual podcast as well from Stitcher directly on your Instagram or social media. So we'd love that as well. Share one of your favorite episodes with uh, with your friends and family and all your followers, especially you know if you're one of those people that listen to us and you've got like 4 million followers on Instagram, just just share it. Share it and then I'll you know I'll, maybe I'll send you a check just for fun, or some flowers or a new Barbell Logic hat or something. So uh, if you want to reach out to CJ, you have any questions about the Academy, you can reach him at C, Gocher, G-O-T-C-H-E-R, did I spell that right? At barbell-logic.com. Also easy to find on the website, barbelllogic.com. And you there are lots of places to reach out and ask questions. If you have questions about the Academy, we'll put you in contact with anyone who can, someone who can answer your questions. Thanks for listening to the show and we'll see you in a few days.